the square root of 64 times x to the fifth. Well, the 64 is 8 squared. So I can see that that 64 right there under the radical, the square root of 64, is equal to 8. So that's equivalent to an 8 outside the radical. So I still have my x to the fifth inside the radical. What do I do with that? Well, we'll keep the 8 out there. x to the fifth is equal to x squared times x squared times x. So what you see here is an x squared multiplied by itself. So that's x squared squared. So that thing, the square root of that is going to be x squared because that thing that I just circled right there is x squared squared, x squared times itself. So that pops out from underneath the radical and just becomes an x squared. So I have 8x squared times the square root of x. Twelve a squared b cubed. Well, let's rewrite this. Twelve is four times three, and I'll keep my a squared, and my b cubed is b squared times b. So what happens here? I have the square root of four. That's just a two. And now this 4 is accounted for. I'll just underline it there to keep track of that. The 3, I'm going to leave there. Let's come back to that in a minute. This a squared, I have here under the radical the square root of a squared. So that's just a. And that a squared right there is now taken into account down here. And then I have a b squared times a b. What's going to happen here? This b squared... I have the square root of that b squared, so that's the same as just having a b outside of the radical. And then I still have, under the radical, I still have this 3 and this b. And that's my answer. 2ab times the square root of 3b.